Super Smash Bros. Brawl is a fantastic source of quality Nintendo fan service. Some of you know where I'm going with this, and I want to thank you for doing your homework. Deep within the menus upon menus of Brawl's UI, inside of the massive vault, is the Nintendo Chronicle, a list of every game Nintendo has ever published, as of December 2007 of course. It's such a fascinating look at all of the things Nintendo was willing to put their money into, man. You see, people thought that Sora in Smash was such a big deal, but the true historians know that Game & Watch Mickey Mouse is truly what paved the way for this partnership to take place. Don't fool yourself otherwise. You got Popeye on NES, multiple baseball games featuring Ken Griffey Jr., so much so you would practically think he was a Nintendo character, he was on an official Christmas card for crying out loud, the Virtual Boy, but at the bottom of the Game Boy line is where one of my favorite nuggets of Nintendo trivia resides. Hamtaro! In fact, jump over to the GBA and hey look at that! More Hamtaro! I have just never gotten over this information, man. I, I get it, you know? Licensed properties, they make a lot of money, sure. Nowadays we have the Switch, Nintendo has worked with both Marvel and DC, they clearly don't care. But Hamtaro? Alright, so here's a bit of a history lesson for all of you uncultured viewers out there who don't know about the almighty Hamtaro. The anime is, by far, one of the cutest damn things you could ever bear witness to. Across multiple seasons and even some movies, Hamtaro and his ragtag group of fellow adorable and quirky hamsters would go on adventures and... And yeah, you know, that, that was really about it. That was the whole show. And it was awesome. I discovered this show around that time I was first getting into anime too, with the likes of Dragon Ball Z and whatnot, and then to see Tom from Toonami talk about how good Hamtaro was? Man, I, I was a fan ever since. Just be sure to not get this confused with Ebichu, which is a uh, totally different hamster anime. I'll, I'll say that much without getting demonetized. Hamtaro did exist before the anime, but in a very small capacity. There was some early animation where Hamtaro wore a shirt, and that's weird, he's much better when he's naked. And even before that, there was this educational magazine for Japanese school children where Hamtaro would like, stare your soul into submission I guess. It's clear that the anime is when things started to peak. Dude, even the theme song was so good. Good enough to have the lyrics altered by protesters in Bangkok against the government of Thai- Oh man, I uh, did not did not expect to see that on the series Wikipedia page, I can say that much. Ham Hams Unite to take down the government, I guess. So yeah, this became a pretty notable franchise. Of course, with success on their hands, video games were soon to follow. Yeah, there is a mobile game, there's also an old PC game as well. But I just can't believe that Nintendo would publish most of them. Dude, some are even made by Alpha Dream. What is this company? This may come off as me scraping the bottom of the barrel of Nintendo content to talk about for you guys on the internet, but trust me, there's a whole lot more to this than you could ever possibly imagine. I have played every game in this franchise, and I'm here to tell you, we got some fun times ahead. So, without any further ado, it's Hamtaro time. Hushy hushy ticky ticky woo. Some of you may be expecting me to start with the Game Boy Color classic, Ham Hams Unite, but actually, that's not the first game in the series. In Japan, that game has a nice big 2 attached to it, which begs the question, why was the first game, Totoko Hemtaro Tomodachi Daisuken Dechu, never get localized? B because because it's a hamster simulator, that's why. Obviously, there's a big language barrier to work around here, though I can tell the game asks me for my blood type along with all my other information, so... You know, I, I always thought that little nugget was missing from the Pokemon games. I tried so hard to figure out if there was actually a game here, but... I don't know, man. I couldn't find it. I don't know what to say to that one. Definitely didn't think I was gonna see Hamtaro jump today. I'm really not sure why this is the case, but it turns out Hamster Simulator is actually a full-on genre, mostly in Japan. You got the Hamster Paradise series, there's Kisuke Hamster, Hamster Monogatari is another series, with one of them even showing up on the N64. I, I guess in Japan, Hamtaro with this genre made total sense. It does in retrospect, but like, why? Why are there so many hamster games? Uh, it's no surprise this one didn't get localized. We already got our deformed pets games. We were totally fine at the time. But now we move on to the good stuff. Ham Hams Unite, developed by Paxofnica, a company that I'm pretty sure no one's heard of, but trust me on this, they also worked on Mole Mania. 
This is a good group of developers right here. I'm really glad Nintendo had a go-to developer for their furry rodent-themed video games. Worked out great for him. It's kind of strange that this one is considered a sequel in Japan. I mean, Hamtaro's in it, sure, but this is a totally different beast. I mean, look at him. What a beast he is. Looks like we have a conundrum on our hands. Hamtaro doesn't know Hamchat. Unbelievable. On top of that, all of your friends have gone missing too. Well, since Boss can't be bothered to go and hunt for anyone himself, leave it to our hero to fill out the dictionary and repopulate the hamster hideout himself. From there, you kinda just wander around a bunch. You pick up food, talk to locals, gather items for those who need them, occasionally dabble in blackmail, and fill up your ham chat book. And really, that's the best part of the game. Each word is associated with this adorable little gesture and like, Oh my god, this game is so cute! That is the main takeaway to get out of this, It's just, oh man, oh look at him do the thing! Oh, this, that's adorable. Hamha! Hamha. For god's sakes, put some heart and soul into it. We kind of work with an old school point and click mentality with this actually. Whenever you come in contact with anything, just try every option available to you and hope it's the right one. Eventually you'll get it right. Sometimes it leads to progression, sometimes it's just another cute animation, sometimes you almost die. It's a lot of fun! Ooh, a cave! What's in here? Shush, we'll get caught! Think I just stumbled across a crime scene. Hmm, alright, how do we... how do we get the scarf from this bird? Hmm... Ah... What do you mean peeing didn't work? Damn it! Oh, ham-ha, my friend! How goes the day? Ah, how embarrassing! Much love to this salesman too, by the way. He just begs you to buy whatever he's trying to peddle at the moment and does so with this really catchy song playing in the background. I love it. It's my favorite part of the game. Okay, wait, no, I lied. My actual favorite part of the game has to be pretty late into the adventure where you basically kill a man. He screams for his life on the way down and Mtaro goes, oh yeah, you know, let's, let's put that scream in the dictionary. <laughs> oh my God. You see, that's the thing with these games now. They are oddly compelling. You may think it's just a kid's game. You give it to little Jimmy or Sarah, it'll shut him up for a while, but no, not at all. Hamtaro has a body count now. Bringing all of your Ham Ham friends back to the hideout is only part of the journey. You do so, get to see a sick party take place, but the adventure truly isn't over until you fill up that dictionary. It isn't until you hit boss with that ham tast when you're all filled up, and then he gives you the final word, great chew, the book cover changes. Oh, it, oh and that's it now. Ah, oh, damn, you know what? That, that's pretty anticlimactic, I'm not gonna lie. Where's my gripping narrative, game? Well, considering how all over the place the Game Boy Color exclusive lineup was, I guess, by default, that, that makes this one of the best Nintendo exclusives on the console, so, uh, hey, congrats are in order, my Ham Ham friend. Good, good job. Maybe the sequel is even better. Ham Ham Heartbreak for the Game Boy Advance. Enter player name, huh? Hmm, Bijou is playable in this one too. Interesting. Eh. I am original and funny. Clearly I didn't watch enough of the anime because, uh, my god, uh, Hamtaro has a villain? This is Spat, a character that apparently only showed up in three episodes of the show and was strong enough of a character to become the focal point of a video game. Good for him. Ooh, and what a villain he is. Essentially, he just randomly goes about his day finding happy people and doing whatever he can to ruin love for them. Basically a standard Twitter user, the more I think about it. Well, naturally, we can't have that. Come on, Hamta- I mean Sonic. Come on, Sonic. You have to save the day. Oh no, we got the dictionary wet. Losing all of the information inside in the process? Somehow? Well, I guess we've forgotten all the words now and have to go get them all over again. It's like a Metroid game all of a sudden when Samus would lose all of her powers randomly. The game certainly looks a whole lot better now that it's on better hardware, but essentially, it is basically the same idea. Pick up food, talk to the locals, gather items for those who need them, partake in high-speed action scenes and make Hamtaro scared for his life, and then fill up your Hamchat book. You know, same game. 
It's just that rather than being solo, Bijou joins you for most of the ride, and rather than bringing your friends back to the hideout, you mend broken hearts of anybody that stands in your way. This does include your friends, but basically anybody could be hit by Spat's evil ways. You're not so much of a matchmaker as you are a match repairer, and uh, you know, that's, that's still a pretty respectable job. Playing both of these games back to back and needing to fill out the dictionary with all of these words that you already had before is a bit annoying, but there is a whole slew of new words with much more fleshed out animations too. This game is still cute as ham heck. Let's not kid our ham selves here. This game is mother hamming adorable. Big fan of Liberty, where they just randomly pull out a Statue of Liberty cosplay. Amazing, they look fabulous. There's Bloat T, which introduces inflation to the franchise. Good. And Rub Rub. You're free to insinuate anything you want about this in the comments below. It's not all the same game though, there is definitely a lot more done here to spice things up from time to time. Many of the tasks that you have to accomplish are more dynamic than before, when they were just mostly static. There's a volleyball segment, a dancing minigame where you plan out your entire routine to get graded on, there's like a genuine boss fight, like, what? The environments are a bit all over the place as well. Ham Ham's Unite tried to stay a lot more grounded and realistic with its locations, but here in Heartbreak, we have a theme park with the hamster roller coaster, and I mean that alone is way out of the boundaries of what we had before. There is more of the same, but it's a lot more polished. There is no denying that. There were some moments that were pretty aimless where I needed a random word that I just happened to miss because I didn't talk to every single NPC in the previous area. That kind of sucked, but in general, it's still a good time. Dude, dude, okay, uh, spoilers, I guess, but when you get to the end of the game and need help building a catapult to get to Spat's evil lair, you need to get a special spoon to do so. Only obtainable after getting three special gems, something pretty easy to come across, and then... Oh, Ganon's not gonna see this coming, I tell you what. And by far, my favorite part of the game it's technically not even a part of the game, it's stuff that was taken out, but the code is still there. And this is amazing. Partway into the game, there's this segment where our heroes go on a boat trip to a different area. And in the final product, the game just cuts from one area to the next after getting onto the boat, and it's fine, you don't really think much about it. Well, initially, there was going to be a cutscene referencing one of the iconic moments from the Titanic. This is real, and there was going to be a rendition of My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion playing in the background. This is a real thing that almost happened. Okay, so I'm not gonna pretend to be like a Titanic expert or anything like that, but... I think this implies that Hamtaro dies. Ham Ham Heartbreak really has no right to be as enjoyable as it is. I'm starting to understand why Nintendo put so much money into this franchise. Ham Ham's Unite was a nice, charming, fun adventure, and this is just way better. It could only go up from here, I guess. Things are about to get even crazier. Next up, the, um, sort of the end of the Hamtaro Adventure Game Trilogy. Here we have Rainbow Rescue, releasing in Japan, Europe, and not America for some reason. Not, not sure why that happened. But the craziest part of all, this was developed by Alpha Dream, the team that brought us Mario and Luigi and Tomato Adventure. Yes, Hamtaro Rainbow Rescue is also their baby. Okay. Well, I guess it was time for someone new to give these hamsters a shot. I can't believe it. Oh no, you guys. It looks like the Rainbow Prince bow has fallen. That's not good. Apparently, this being is able to make rainbows with his umbrella. That's pretty cool, but it's lost its power after losing its colors. Oh, darn. Well, all right, simple enough, I guess. Go with your friends and scavenge the land for items that have the core colors that you need and save the day. But you know, first things first here, we gotta partake in a little bit of coloring. <laughs> You're gonna give me a coloring book as soon as the game starts? Of course I'm gonna take advantage of it. There you go. Sonic the Hamster. My fan character is real now. One thing that is immediately apparent with this game, the sprite work has gotten a massive upgrade. Heartbreak was just a bit of a polished version of Unite, which was fine, but wow, you get a little bit of extra budget in there and rework all the sprites, it looks so good. Especially those character portraits, man, great looking stuff all around. The shading is immaculate, or dare I say, Hamaculate, I guess. Rainbow Rescue actually released a few months before Superstar Saga did, and it is very evident in both that Art Direction is one of this team's strong suits. Alpha Dream really knew how to get those pixels to look really nice. 
On the surface, it may seem like this is more of the same once again, except now you control a whole slew of hamsters at the same time instead of just one or two, but no. Actually, the entire gameplay loop has been completely modified, and I think for the better. There's still plenty of locals to talk to and ham haws to throw around at your leisure, but now mini-games take center stage in almost everything you do. The world is filled with tasks to complete. Simple little mini-games that get you from one place to another, secure an item that you need, stuff like that. And rather than being restricted from progression because of a word that you just simply couldn't think of, sometimes you need a specific hamster for a task that you haven't recruited yet, and then there you go. You get the one that you need, since not everybody can do everything this time around, and you move on with your day. Considering Superstar Saga's main gimmick was partnering brother with brother, like, at all times, it's pretty wild to think that this game works with a similar concept. I mean, it makes sense, they were both being developed around the same time, but the parallels, I didn't think I'd be comparing Mario to Hamtaro, but, uh, here we are. Also, since dialogue and the actions happen a lot quicker, and we have a much more standard form of progression now, with story segments revolving around a specific color and then you move on, the pace has quickened up dramatically from what it used to be. That aura of sort of being lost and kind of just wandering around aimlessly until you talk to the right person with the right word, that's no longer here, thank goodness. Plus, the whole minigames needing specific hamsters thing adds a whole lot of personality to these characters that mostly just relied on text in the previous games. There is a lot of genuine thought put into this. Now ultimately, all jokes aside, this is still a kid's game, and me, the grown adult, playing a game that's way out of his target demographic may not have the best judgement call here, but these games are pretty good. I mean, there's no committing crimes, there's no narrowly avoiding death, there's no narrowly causing death, but it's still pretty good. There may be some of those weird twisted things at the end of the rainbow that I haven't seen yet, but even without that, it's still enjoyable. I guess. You see, that's one of the problems when you have a genuinely solid game to talk about. There's less interesting things to say. I mean, good for the game, I guess. Alpha Dream did the impossible here and hit the ground running with Hamtaro. That's so, so cool. But if you're looking for more of that blackmail and aura of death stuff that the previous adventures gave you, that's not gonna be here. Hopefully your thoughts on the game don't hinge on that fact. All right, gang, as loud as you can. <gasps> Hamtaro should have been in Smash instead of Sora! Ah, look at that! He ran to go write an angry letter to Nintendo. Good for him, he has his head in the right place. But, now, for all intents and purposes, this is the end of the... sort of, I don't know, like, it's a Hamtaro trilogy, I guess. We have three games of a similar gameplay style, where each game has very noticeable upgrades as we move forward, while each staying very enjoyable in their own right. This, these are pretty good, I gotta say! These are actually really fun! Alpha Dream would go on to make a few other games for the franchise, but none of them really hit the high marks of before. Next on the docket, we have Hamtaro the Ham Ham Games. As you can probably figure just based on the artwork, we got a sports-themed minigame collection here. Interestingly enough, this game was released in between Rainbow Rescue's Japanese release and its European release nearly a year and a half later. Why the long delay, you might ask? Well, that's because of Nintendo. Didn't really matter to Japan, I guess, but Nintendo of Europe specifically wanted Ham Ham Games' release to coincide with the 2004 Summer Olympics in Athens, Greece. Because of course. Oh man, the world is funny sometimes. We got racing, tennis, diving, hammer throw. This is indeed an Olympics-based video game, all right. I have played far too much Mario and Sonic in my life to know exactly what to get out of this. All of the sprite work continues to be great, and for what it is, it plays fine. But I think I'm mostly just upset that the era of Hamtaro Adventure Games is dead now. This is a fine enough minigame collection, but I didn't want this. I was able to change the main hamster greeting though from ham ha to sa dude. So I mean, that's something. And then we can jump to the DS and, well, unfortunately things don't really get any better. There's a quiz game that didn't release outside of Japan, so that's a total bust. And then there's a game that did get localized. Hi Hamtaro, Ham Ham Challenge. It's another minigame collection, but catered for a much tinier child demographic. It's pretty brain dead, honestly. The previous minigame collections were like kind of Mario Party themed. They were easy, but you still have to put some thought into it. Here, nah, these are for children still trying to develop their basic motor skills. Sadly, before we knew it, Hamtaro had entered licensed game Purgatory before fading out into relative obscurity. 
Also, like, what the hell is this? They made all of the characters incredibly tiny with these massive heads, and oh god, I hate it. I mean, you think Fat Pikachu to Skinny Pikachu was like this really disgusting sin, but this... Oh, this is gross! I hate it. I hate it so much. That's not Hamtaro. I don't care what anyone says. That's not Hamtaro. That's a clone. Alpha Dream should not have messed with the good thing, man. Maybe they wouldn't be bankrupt right now if that was the case. Okay, maybe that one was mean. It's crazy, man. I knew for years that Nintendo published these games, and it was always this neat little nugget of trivia that I had in the back of my head, but... When you really look at everything this series had to offer, this was one hell of a rabbit hole. Or... Hamster hole, I guess. The Mario and Luigi developers were involved, one of the games was tied to the Olympics, there's the cut Titanic scene, that is fantastic stuff. Once again, Hamtaro killed a man! At the end of the day, what I'm calling the Hamtaro Adventure Trilogy offered plenty of entertainment for the hours I put into it. The other games, not as good, but it made that Adventure Trilogy all that sweeter, so that's really cool, and I definitely recommend you check them out, especially if you like cute things, like this thing. And really, when you really, really see just how many of these games released and Nintendo made sure they were exclusive, they put money behind this franchise, it just begs the question, why did Hamtaro not get into Smash but Sora did? That's all I have to say, I'll leave you with that, Bye bye